I am unashamed. What about you? So, Jace, I couldn't help but uh, notice that you resurrected the bomber hat yeah. today. This is not the <laughs> original hat. You know? Do you remember you gave me one of these hats that I still have? When you were a boy. Yeah. Off your head, and I still use that hat today. It's really? one of these. They used to. Helmet liner. Uh, it, military yeah. edition. But Duck Commander came up with a version of it because Phil always wore them and always wore them. But I, I like it. But I, I couldn't find my normal beanie. I'm not Cy sure. brought it back from the military Vietnam era. Is that yeah. where you, you got the first one? He brought some back him. and said, might all right, check this out. It'll keep your ears warm. But I'm wearing this because as soon as we finish this today, there's a time that happens every year that I do. I look forward to it. I've I've labeled it running with the ops. <laughs> You know how they have running with the bulls? Yeah. I never got into that because I don't like to run with things that can kill me. But I like to run with things that I can eat, which is an Opelousas catfish. Every which April, is, now I'm assuming the Opelousas catfish got his name because he's the same color as the Opelousas horse. That's correct. correct. Yeah, so did you running know with that, options. you know, I'll give it a little interesting factoid here, that no... Two Opelousas catfish have the same identical pattern. That's true. But a blue cat does. Yep. Hmm. I figured you'd say, where did seawater dream that what up? What department no, in seawater in the dream that up? Dad? Origin I of I noticed life. some of them are more yellow, some of them are darker. Yeah. And they certain, all have a splotchy look about If you them. notice, in, in different regions, they look a little different. So I've seen pictures of them, like in Oklahoma, they're a little different shade than they are down here, which I don't know what that they means. They catch them out of the Amazon River. They don't call mm-hmm. them Opelousas, but they have the old guy on there, you know, the big rod and reel guy. Mm-hmm. But I saw him drag one up about 75, 80 pounder. Oh, wow. oh the fish on guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that guy. <laughs> yeah. Fish on! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so every year I do that. Look, Opelousas catfish are they're mysterious in that you can't raise them because they become cannibalistic. So yep. you can't go to a restaurant. You're not going to eat Opelousas catfish. So nope. people say, catfish? What are you eating catfish? But an Opelousas catfish, mm. when you clean, if I took five catfish and cleaned them all, you would know the Opelousas catfish because yep. the meat just looks better. And guess what? It is. And I told you when I went to Israel, guess what? Sea of Galilee. Full of Opelousas catfish. I told somebody that I would have never dreamed. I would have either. That By the way, amazing. Jace, I gave you the so. belly meat off of about a 12, 15 pounder of the day. I, I ate it. <laughs> so, how was that? It was fantastic. <laughs> Which is what spawned in me every year I run with the ops. So, I'm putting my nets out, but right now the river's up. The current is strong. I will have a life jacket on. Yeah. And yeah. you fall out, and and it's de- uh, it's uh cold. Yeah. Today I woke up, and I was like, "Ooh, I need a hat." Yeah, this bad storm came through and brought a cold front. And so I'll give you updates. What the duck commander, which now because of the coronavirus, you know that the store's not open, and you know Willie and his scheming mind because you got to keep, <laughs> you know, he's a businessman. So what are we gonna do? Oh, I got it. Let me send a filming crew down there and let Jace, because he runs with the ops every year. And so there he's sending some duck commander cameramen, and they're going to – because what we're going to do, what happens is I take the ops. Of course, I'm going to eat them. And I'll give some to the widow ladies, you know, yep. like I always do, yep. and off the top. What size but, but, op, Jace, would you recommend? How much weight? What size do you I, prefer? I go 3 to 12. Now, if it's below three, I throw it back. It's just a respect thing because I like them. I may need to get a little bigger. Get bigger. And if they're over 12, I either give them to someone I don't that I love but I don't like. <laughs> I understand what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Because it's good. A lot of them like the big ones, the big ones. But their meat I found to be a little coarse. Yeah. A little rubbery. And, like the one you gave me the other day is 15. He yeah. was a little – so I – you know, I did. I was hoping I wasn't the person you love but don't like. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I ate that one without any qualms. No, because he, he's running he the bubble. Bad, but but three an eight to pounder tw- would have been better. Well, three to twelve is perfect. Yeah, and so that's like these people saying this. You know, the same philosophy with big bass and big buck deer. 
they're like, oh, boy, I can, I can get that thing to taste as good as a little one. Oh, yeah. No, you can't. You're a liar. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> See, you've believed that in your mind because you wanted to put the rack on your wall or you wanted to mount the replica of the bass. Yep. But don't tell me a 10-pound bass <laughs> tastes as good as a one-pound bass because that's a ball I had any correct. bass that tasted and good and a big buck the deer record. the reason I don't shoot them people are like well you, you're just you know what's wrong with you Is because I, I can't eat the thing <laughs> Now, people take it, and they Make turn it into and, chili yeah. and salt, and okay, let's feed the world with deer, all right? Big buck deer. I'm all for it, but I'm just telling you, personally, <laughs> I run with things that I deem delicacies, and an eight-pound op is a delicacy. You're so, into fresh-caught crappie, yes. you're you're, you're yes. into Opelousas cat, yep. and bullfrogs. Now, and yeah. what do they all have in common? Pretty fine table fare. Yeah. Oh, they're the best. That's right. They're good. So I'll start that journey. So I'm sure you can. They'll be documenting that in some way. So I, that's I why I have that. I would think fish, but. Opelousas, cat, crappie, frogs. I would think they're not fatty. They're not fat. They, they, this no, is, they're very healthy for you. No, uh, one of the best forms of fish you can eat. I mean, especially out of uh, out of freshwater. And the thing about this interesting about the op, the reason he's so good is his diet. He only eats live bait. That's he only correct. eats perch or live. So when you we used to fish trot lines for him, remember dad and summertime when the water's low, you can't fish anything hardly to catch them. So you do trot lines. Yep. Those big swivel hooks. And I remember us so he'd send us down, which we love doing it, to catch little small Shad. Perch and shad yeah, and brim, yeah. Yeah. and you would bait, you hook them through the back with that thing, but you come back and sometimes that'd be a 25, 30 pound op oh, oh, yeah. that had gotten on. Well, the whole that. process, I enjoy the whole process because what I'll do is the fish that are deemed, uh, you know, trash fish, I'll take those, chop those up, and then I'll bait crawfish traps at the si simultaneous time. So I'm, when I run with the ops, I also yep. have a side run. On the crawfish, because yep. it's crawfish season now. And the trashier fish that you can't eat North turn you know, in a great We bay. have about a two-month longer crawfish cycle because we're a little further north, a little cooler. Right. South Louisiana, the crawfish has been coming out since February. Right. March, April, now their crawfish season is beginning to wind down a little bit. But ours picks up May, June, mm -hmm. April, May, June. We catch about... A little later than South Louisiana. It's always a difficult question. By the way, Jace, they are literally millions of crawfish oh, coming. Oh, oh, I know. I've been watching them. Well, backwaters are really good for fishing and yep. for crawfishing, yep. and so we had that this year. So it'll be a bumper year. And the reason you say, well, what, why do the ops only run two months out of the year or within that two-month time period? But they're going to spawn – and it, you've seen the same thing in the you know with different other fish when it's time to spawn. They all go run the river. By the way, Jason, the property we just purchased, I put a twenty hook trot line out, baited them, went and checked the net, came back within thirty minutes, and I looked down there, I had about a twelve pound high fin blue mm -hmm. on there. The next morning, I had about five more catfish so i had enough to feed 20 people off a little 20 hook chot line which by the way for the audience so we're we're doing and a series them big trees we're doing there. a series on in the woods with phil right now during the quarantine it's called in the quarantine with phil it's on blaze tv if you want to check that out and check out a subscription they're still running a great uh deal you save basically 30 percent off if you if you go and sign up but on there dad's been showing that sort of thing and this is kind of prime time. It's kind of interesting this happened this time of year because you think about the crawfish, mayhaws, uh, you know, running these, the ops, all that this, this, this time of year. of the things that I did pre-pandemic, I've been doing during the pandemic. You say, what changed? Nothing except for one thing. Who is the poor soul that's going to town, which I've not been to town, I don't get there much anyway, but on Sunday mornings, <laughs> I used to drive up with the brothers. Yeah, now you don't even do that. Now we don't do that. So the only thing I found different is that the individual that goes after staples, like uh, green onions, onions, yeah. bell pepper, wow. celery, garlic. Uh, 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 Which, by the way, you bread, can grow all that, too. Bread. Uh, you can get by without it. But then you have like cornmeal, flour, things like that, salt, black pepper, so stuff like that, we got a pretty good little head start and got a pretty good little deal, but 
you still run low on flour. Yep. To make mayo jelly, it takes a lot of sugar. Right. So sugar is kind of like, according to the individual we send, usually Dan. Sometimes Miss Kay will go with her friend. Her friend will go in and get the stuff. So it's not the safest thing in the world with a pandemic going on. But hey, well, and they, you know, that's been one of the things they've said. Me personally, I haven't moved in the last <laughs> seven weeks. So I told Dan that the other day. I said, Dan, does that mean you're the most expendable because you've been the, the grocery man? He said, apparently so. That's what I told him. <laughs> I said, you're young, but you are expendable. I mean, we could go on without you. I'm not I know really. during the tornadoes the other day when but I Dan, he was uh, looking at. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Dan is Phil's butler, who I'm not sure where Dan came from, but uh, and he's he's a little different, but loves the Lord, good, he's just shows guy. you, yeah. So, and so his Mrs. dad used to do all your filming, you know, the one that said that you have about a personality like a stick of butter. <laughs> no, he's, he had the vision, yeah, you have the, the vision of, of a stick of butter. <laughs> Boy, was he wrong, <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> Sometimes you that get was it right. steady Eddie Dan's dad. <laughs> Sometimes you miss it. No, but Missy <laughs> said, "Well, I wonder what uh, Phil's Butler Dan, which says that a joke, is doing during the tornado." And so I, I played a joke on Miss K. So when I called and checked on y'all, I, she answered. I said, "Well, I was making sure y'all was okay." I said, "You know what Dan did, don't you? Because he's a big workout guy, and he does all these. He's into ninja training." Mm-hmm. I and think I, one of his I, handles on, on some is Ninja yeah, Dan. I said, you know what he did? I'll give him said, credit. He is one talked up dude. I said, did you hear what he did? And she said, what? I said, he made himself into a ball and got into the refrigerator. <laughs> and she went, did he really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You shouldn't be telling your mama stuff like that. <laughs> she never went back and said, "Oh, that was a joke." Yeah, I was like, I never told her. It was, was a bad joke. as she it was bad as she's probably repeated that now to twenty seven other people. <laughs> I'm gonna read about it on Facebook next week. That that's but your what mother I, keeps Dan busy. That's for sure. Going to yeah. town, but we try to keep it at a minimum because. You know, get the stuff. You don't have to go back down for a couple of weeks. Yeah. So we try to get it to where he doesn't have to go up there much. Well, it's kind of yeah. funny because mom is so social, and she is the the full antithesis of dad because she's so social and dad's so antisocial. And she's like, well, your daddy, nothing's changed about his life. He's just doing what he's always done. But my life is, you know, derailed because of the yeah, pandemic. Well, I got on to her about going out. I know. You were going And she was like – well, I mean, I'd just rather be dead than not see my friend. Because well, they're, they're hauling her around, and she stays in the car, and they come out of their house, and then she talks to them from like 100 yards away. I was like, okay, just just give it a rest. She works with a lot of, you know, let's call them trouble women, but uh, she works with a lot of them, but they're still having their deal. They do it now the, by Zoom, which is pretty yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty cool. They've been doing the Zoom Bible study. All right, which Al, I which way are we good. heading this morning? Well, let's take a break, and then we'll jump in. So one of the things I've noticed about the uh, I've mentioned it before on the uh, during the quarantine of the pandemic we've been going through is uh, you know no barbers can work and so of course yeah. Jace you refer you just cut your own hair I do which which is no, which is noticeable yeah mm-hmm. it's you've done a fine job no I haven't cut it in a while and uh, but the rest of us are kind of missing our you know I got the same person to cut my hair for thirty years I've been with her as my, almost as long as Lisa <coughs> funny know. you bring that up I. There's a little redneck girl lives up the road. Her and her man, couple kids. You mean that affectionately? Yeah, Cricket is her name. <laughs> and Cricket came down, and uh, Miss Kay said, "Won't you get a haircut?" I said, "Fine." So I sat down three or four nights ago, and she just click 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 click. She just took about. I, you I, cut I, her hair, or she cut you. No, she cut. Oh, oh. No, I don't cut her, Jason. Oh. <clears throat> she cut my hair, and uh. Took about five minutes. Well, I didn't well, even notice. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there you go. It's hard to tell with you two. So while we're thinking about trying to get, we're trying to think about get hair cut, there's a lot of guys out there trying to get hair to grow, uh, yeah. which I understand the difference. So some people don't have the same problems. But we got some uh, got some help for you guys. Our friends at keeps.com, because they want you to keep your hair, which I like. Uh, basically, they've got a couple of FDA-approved hair loss products, you get an online consultation if you go to their website. They'll ship it to your door. You never have to leave your couch and hopefully get some hair growing again. So then you can have the problem, uh, I guess, during a pandemic of needing a hair stylist. But if you go to keeps.com slash door, 
keeps, K E E P S dot com slash door. Uh, go there, check it out, do your consultation, and uh, get your hair growing. So we want to uh, we want to sort of finish up um, back in John four, uh, which we were a couple of podcasts ago. We were talking about Jesus's encounter uh, with this Samaritan woman, and it was really interesting. We sort of did a back and forth, and one of the things that we talked about is kind of where we left off was that he basically told this woman when you look at verse twenty one through twenty four, John four twenty one through twenty four, that. Everything that had been established by God, which includes Jesus, because remember, he's always been here. He was he was there with, with God mm-hmm. in the beginning and before time. He just became flesh. He just became flesh. Correct. Roughly 2,000 years ago. Correct. So, But everything that – so everything he established, Jesus was part of the establishment with the, the first the tabernacle and later the temple, the worship setup that God set forth for his people, which became the Jewish people – it kind of got splintered off in inside a civil war, and then the Samaritans were, you know, they had their own worship on another mountain. But he's going to address that in this text. But what I found was fascinating was that he's telling this woman, this Samaritan woman who had never met, who, who he shouldn't even been talking to, and I say shouldn't in quotes, because a Jewish man, especially a rabbi, would never have done this. But he explains to her that everything that's been in terms of worship up until the moment he's talking to her is changing. I mean, mm-hmm. it has changed in the sense he's there, and it's about to change because it's never going to be the same Big again. Time. I mean, this was a huge, you know, theological moment. Remember the place of worship that had been that way since Solomon's temple, the place of worship, Al, Herod's temple, I guess they would call it, uh, 70 A.D., Jesus looked at it while he was on the earth, 33 he said, "Not one stone to be left on That's top right. of another. I'm going. That thing's coming down. Yep. The place you go and have been worshiping right. for the last fifteen hundred years, whatever. Right. You, you say no longer will be here. Of course. And you, you, what's amazing, Al? They never rebuilt it. No, but but I do find it fascinating, Jace. You can speak to this. You were there. There's just the little section area where they still go to. Oh yeah. I mean, it's not even there, it's but the it's the bottom of the wall, the foundation. Thousands of people go there. We went. I mean, you have to go through metal detectors and everything. And right on the other side is Muslim controlled. So right. you're literally right on the line. Of course, they're hollering on the other side at the Christians. Who are hollering, you know, as they worship every, they do it every weekend, and it, it, and we were there. Look, is this what they call the Wailing Wall? Is that what that's that? Yeah. That's okay. And they look. There's people. I mean, I I literally participated. There are people crying. There. I mean, first they're dancing, they're talking, they're singing, they're shouting, they're chanting, they're reading. You know, all Remember, this is going on at the same time still, at the wall. They still have it. The place. Jesus told the woman at the well, "A time is coming." Are y'all listening? And has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they're the kind of worshiper the Father seeks. God's spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and truth. He's saying the time is coming when you don't have to go to church to go to worship services. Mm -hmm. Go up here to worship it's it's Romans twelve all over again. Let me just give them three texts, Al. First well, and, Corinth- the, and the whole book of Hebrews. Yeah, I mean that's what it's all about. First Corinthians three, toward the end of it, uh, says this. Uh, let's see. It will be revealed. By, let's see. Right here. What was that? Don't you, you know? Well, he sounded like he was at the whaling Don't wall. you know <laughs> that you yourselves say where you're at, Phil? First so. Corinthians three about sixteen. You yourselves are God's temple, and that God's spirit lives in you. Remember what he told the woman at the whale: "A time is coming, and now has now come, when you'll worship the Father in spirit and truth." If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him, for God's temple is sacred. Here, here's a keeper now, and you are that temple. Hold on to that. All of us, one at a time, gather together, and we all form the temple of God. Now, consequently, Ephesians 3, 19, 18 
Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's household, citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone of the building. Listen, in him, the whole building, that's me, you, and all the other sons and daughters of God worldwide, is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. You're like, we're the building. We are the church building. We don't go to church where two or three of us are gathered in the name of Jesus. He'll be there. You don't have to go anywhere. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. That's why he said the worshipers, a little lady at the well, they'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth everywhere they are because they will be added one at a time like bricks like the old Pink mm-hmm. Floyd song, another brick in the wall. You say we're added sure to the wall. Sure, was like that song. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying. They I've needed never heard Jesus. anybody read three Bible verses and quote Pink Floyd. They the same needed time. Jesus, hey. uh, but <laughs> they didn't know what I'm talking about. But I knew what they were talking about. <laughs> they said you're another brick in the wall. You're nothing. Yeah. What God says is, oh, with chief, chief cornerstone, you're something. And and you, each brick in that wall mm-hmm. is an eternal brick. But and you're like me. When I heard that song, my first re- re- reaction was, "They need Jesus," because we are a wall. That's, that's right. it. You know, yeah, that's you know, it. You they know, missed everybody it. talking about Trump. Maybe Trump, they'll hear know. this podcast and come together, and they'd they be joined with the building. But the bottom line is, you read sure those two still texts: alive, Phil. Uh, <laughs> Ephesians, Ephesians uh, <laughs> chapter two, and First Corinthians chapter three. I just read it to you, and you say, and add that final thing about us being the body there's one body and we all are together each member belongs to all the others and it begins just to stack up on top itself therefore uh in view of god's mercy offer your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing to god which is your spiritual act of worship that's romans 12 everybody needs to read romans 12 and operate with what that says and you'll understand the kingdom <clears throat> Unfortunately, people, I think, realize that what you just said. Then they use that for an excuse not to meet because they're right. you know it it you see you see that all the time. I want to re- uh, you know read two verses that before you read them, Jace. Just remember, <coughs> up to now, you say, Sophia, what you're saying is you three brothers in a family group are seated at a table. What we are discussing with you and what we are doing with you here today, today is Monday. It's the second day of the week. We just finished up the resurrection of Jesus. We're seated here, seated, seated here at this table, Al. We are worshiping God. Mm-hmm. And look, they can say all they want to. A government edict, the pandemic will shut you down. Uh, we're communists, so we're not going to allow you to worship God freely like in Red China and like in uh, North Korea, Iran. You can't meet in, in the name of Jesus at a church building. So here we are, Al, three of us. We're talking to about four or 500,000 people. You're like, and you've got members of the household of God you're speaking to. We all together, the saved among us, you say, good night, we're the temple of God. No government edict is going to ever shut that down. That's right. We may be doing it in secret and whispering the verses, Mm -hmm. but we're not going anywhere, Al. There were even some cases that have happened during the pandemic where – People have decided to meet anyway, and then there were others where they did drive they, they up. And, they just ought to do what the government says. We'll meet in homes. We're okay. Right. Well, that was Jesus' point. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter what system of religion you came from, because they all were looking at Moses and Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments and the you know how the most holy place and oh, you know, yeah. all the rules and regulations. Oh, so yeah. all of a sudden here he runs upon a woman. Doesn't matter what gender. Doesn't matter what you did. That's Jesus right. is 
he picked Sinful her woman. For, for a reason. And he's like, there's a new way to worship. Now, he comes up with in spirit and in truth, which is, to your point, what it wasn't going to be a place on a mountain. Because I think about that Mount Sinai, what, you know, all what happened. She's there. arguing about which <laughs> mountain should we worship on. <laughs> but hang on, Jay, before you read that, let's take a quick break. In 2 Corinthians 3, comparing the system of Jesus and what was under Moses, he says, even to this day, verse 15, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You bet you. Which is pretty much the opposite of how you see some religions function Mm -hmm. within a place mentality. There is zero freedom. I'm almost going to whisper this. The American model (laughs) is not the biblical model. (laughs) Yeah. Be easy when you say that. People, he's saying we don't need a church building. You say, you are the building. (laughs) I think that was his point. Another place, the whole book of Hebrews discusses this transition between the place, the former the former model, and then how Jesus just completely on resurrection day, while you're there, what did you say you and your family did? What was that? Tell Alan and I said that again. So yesterday you I don't remember what I did yesterday, Phil. <laughs> yeah, what I what it meant. You're in the basement, but you took oh, the Lord's the Supper. Oh, the tornado. That was the last podcast. The yeah, Lord's Supper. We took the Lord's Supper. Where were you? Where? What place were you, Jace? I was in my living room. You were in your living room. Yeah. So did you uh, accept that as worshiping God? We were worshiping God. And look, I don't want to give you a heart attack or our viewers, but the only fruit of the vine I could find was some wine. <laughs> I actually had real wine and some salt. Hey, that's old school. That's yeah, old school. Yeah, I had some crackers. I mean, that's what we that's It's what, biblical. That's what we did. So It's uh, biblical. Yeah, that's what we were. I'm sure I'll get an email or two on that. <laughs> so but. you worship God in your living room, and did you say, mm-hmm. but did you say, well, it's really not worship because I'm not up here at some building with a steeple on it? I got the concept. We were we were worshiping God. <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter where we are. You know, that's why when I'm driving down the road and people pull up next to me and they're like, who's this guy talking to? What's he screaming about? Oh, no, I'm just worshiping. I'm singing. I play that worship music loud, and I sing. <laughs> I was doing it yesterday, and it, you know, I was practicing my, my golf pitching because I didn't play golf for so many months. And then we went and played the other day, and it was a complete disaster. <laughs> Make your point with your two verses, Jason. Well, this is a good story. Okay. And so I'm out practicing. <laughs> well, while I'm, I, I said, you know what? I got to have a happy thought because you get the yips in your mind when you haven't done something, and I'm shanking the, you know, golf shot. So I just started singing worship songs as loud as I could to take my mind off this stress I was having, you know, and it started working. <laughs> And so I was in between the two. I've never heard of worse than being an answer to a bad short game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, well, that's you're, pretty. You're going to see it, baby. Yeah. So look, so I was distracted because a growling bulldog attacked me, which was my neighbors. And then when I looked up, well, it was uh, you know in between me and Willie is his adopted daughter, uh, Be- Rebecca, and her husband. <laughs> and they had their parents over his uh, Rebecca's husband's parents, they were all like looking at me dumbfounded, trying to figure out where this sound, because to me it's singing, it sounds beautiful. To them, it was a cry of pain and need for help. <laughs> it was a distress call. I thought you'd like that story, Phil, but I don't guess you did. So in Hebrews 13, I want to read this. Verse 11, the high priest carries the blood of animals into the most holy place as a sin offering which was how they worship God without Jesus. They had a yep. system. They had a place. They had a place that was the Holy of Holies, and the priests had to come in there, and they went into these places where everything was done in reverence and in order in God's way that God They're still you know, doing directed. it worldwide a lot like that. They're still doing it I know. post-Jesus. But anyway, let me read what it says. In verse 12 says, And so Jesus also suffered outside the city gate which goes into what we're talking about in John 4 
things would be different with Jesus. It was no longer we're we're going not not only are we going out, you know outside the building, we're going outside the city. Yeah. And it says so he suffered outside the city gate to make the people holy through his own blood. Let us then go to him outside the camp, outside the building, outside the camp, outside the city, where in, in the world. Anywhere you are. In, in the world. In any and, group of people, which specifically because yeah. the Hebrew letter was written primarily to Jews. But, I mean, so the Hebrew writer saying there at the end of it, look, it's bigger than just us. Oh, yeah. And remember Jesus told the woman in John 4, he said. And by the way, they had a hard time with that. But they did. And he told her. He was real specific. He told the woman. He said it's for the Jews first. Yep. Which it was. That's yep. the people of God. They had first bite at the apple, but then next was everybody else: Samaritans, Gentiles. It just goes even out. Samaritans like you, girl. That's exactly she right. She was stunned, Al. She was because she never. I mean, she was again shocked to even talk to her, but then it went beyond that, which is powerful. But even to go with what Phil said about he named all the things, and there's more than that. There's you know a wall, a built where God's building, where God's temple, where God's body. You know, in First Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12 he was trying to get them to see that concept the same thing the woman at the well the body is a unit though it is made up of many parts and though all its parts are many they form one body so it is with christ and then he says for we were all baptized by one spirit because he said we worship in spirit and in truth into one body whether jews or greeks Mm. We're, we're going to worship together in the spirit, and it's not going to be based on your culture, where you're from, or what mountain you're on. Slave nor free. It doesn't matter what class of people you are. And I love this. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Yep. We all drink the same spirit, whether you're male or female, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're a Jew or Greek. He's whether, the glue that holds us together. Yes. So, and then it says, now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. And then he goes on to give this illustration that some of us look different. Some of us are a foot. Some of us are a nose. But we all come together in Jesus through the Holy Spirit to form this one machine that is not localized to a a place. Right. Uh, That was the point he was introducing, which I'm sure to her was like, the wildest thing you could ever imagine. America should take something like a pandemic when they say stay at home and do the best you can. And we are we're in contact with our brothers and sisters. Look, there was a gigantic meal that went up there from way down here. Miss Kay was at the helm on how you're going to get the homeless brothers and sisters, how we're going to get some food to them, because mm-hmm. they followed on some pretty hard times up there. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So we had the food, food going that way, as fine as you've ever seen, ham and green beans, you know. I mean, well, we gave them a feast, and that was all given to the all the ones that were, right. were needy. So we <laughs> made sure they were being taken care of among the body. We're way down there in the woods. They way up there in town. But you said where well, they were talking to each other on the phone, and Miss Kay is saying, well, he's on his way, and he has all the food, so he'll be up there in about 15 minutes. Terry's going to be out there in the parking lot. He's going to stay away <laughs> about 20 yards from y'all and lead singing in the parking lot. So they were all had it all worked out. So you say, did you miss a beat when the pandemic come along and we could no longer get crowded up together? We didn't miss a beat. So no. I didn't realize that mom but, was uh, – let's take a quick break. So I didn't realize that mom, we talk about drive-up church, which is a lot of stuff going on around the country. Mom had walk-up. She was coordinating the walk-up church yesterday yeah, at but, university. Which well, is you know where I, I use you know, a lot of what I teach about the role of women, and uh, which we'll, I'm sure we'll get into it as the weeks unfold in the, yeah. in the podcast because I think a lot of that today in religion, they take a verse like in 1 Corinthians – where it says, you know, a woman shouldn't have authority over a man. She's not allowed to teach. And right. people make these rules, you know, over that that one text. But I think here the reason we're reading in First Corinthians and even seeing, like, we're talking about our mom, you're just talking about that like no big deal. Where she's doing things now that, which is the same church work, 
But if she did that in a church building, a lot of people say, well, wait a minute, I'm not sure she can do yeah, that. Yeah, she she's going to be doing that. You know, and so, now look. That is correct. And and, and so here, here's my point. It's the same kind of this camp mentality where people try to take a situation that happened. That verse is in the Bible about a woman's role. So it means something. But they'll take something and they'll try to make rules in certain areas, a, a church building, a mountain, which don't apply outside of it, which seems to the world they're looking saying, well, that's weird. You know, what's your what's your problem with women? And so that's why I brought up the point last time we talked about John 4, which is a couple podcasts ago, that Jesus had a habit of picking women in, in his ministry. I mean, he did it a lot. And sure. really highlighting it, even in front of his disciples, you remember where the woman cried and and – washed his feet with her hair, you know, and well, all the disciples, they were like, what's head. wrong with this woman? You know what I mean? I mean, we could have took that and sold, you know, that she had the perfume. And and he's like, hey, when the gospel's preached, because she gets it, not only will it be preached, but her story will be preached. I mean, not only did he take up for he rebuked them. Well, look, even in, it. even in this text, we hadn't read it, Jace, but <clears throat> in verse 27, the disciples returned because they were they were going to town to get some food. When they came back, they're surprised to find him talking with a woman. So first of all, that she was a woman, but oh, then yeah. second, she was a Samaritan woman. But I love it. it says, but no one asked, "What do you want?" or "Why are you talking with her?" <laughs> <laughs> so to me, it was like a dog. You know, a dog tries to get in your stuff, and you just you hit that snout yeah. and say no. And you're trying to tell them their snout had been snapped enough times where they they wanted to say something because they knew this wasn't kosher, <laughs> but nobody yeah. opened their mouth, you know, because they were going to get rebuked if they if did. If you well, stopped your, if they somebody, let me put it this way, let me turn around the other way. No government edict, no government rule or regulation will stop people like your mother from reaching out. No. To the yeah. women and the poor soul she reaches out to, she's not going to stop doing that. No, she'll but see, we had a situation came up where uh, the reason I, I started studying this because I taught a class a couple of years ago on First Corinthians. And look, First Corinthians and Second, I mean, they the church there had a lot of problems. Uh, you know, somebody sent a uh, question on an email that I think you had down to get to one day about saying. Uh, what was the about the uh, not covering your head? Mm -hmm. And I've been rebuked several times. You know, if you had a hat on, I mean, you can't wear a hat in a building, or cause, and they're using that text not just when you pray, but you can't have a hat on when you walk in the That's building. The dumbest yeah. thing I've ever heard. In well, my life. I know, but but it means something to people. They're 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 not being ridiculous in their mind. They really believe you're violating a passage and are in danger from the fires it's of It's like somebody coming along, Jason, and saying, well, if your wife and y'all's mother is making sure food is being distributed to the widows and the orphans and the homeless, if that's what she's doing, does that uh, is she, she holding up authority over you? As her husband, right. is that she exercised an authority over you, Phil? Like that's a threat to my authority? Yeah. Well, the woman is helping the homeless and the poor well, and the that's widows. what I was going to say. Uh, <laughs> Will, they asked Willie's daughter, uh, Sadie, who's an awesome – I mean, I, I'll have to admit, I think she's the best Robertson preacher she's, that there is out is of the a, Robertson. a woman proclaimer. Oh, she's awesome. And so they wanted her to share her ministry or whatever at her church. Well, somebody said, well, I'm not sure she can do that because she's a woman, you know. And so then I don't know, from that moment on, I thought something about this doesn't seem right. It's in that theology, because right. we all, she does an awesome ministry, you know. How many so, daughters did so, Philip, uh, Philip have? He had, who was, four. he had four. But so four I, daughters? Look, so I started studying this, and I realized people, you know, they they get emotional about this subject, because they're like, well, it's a, it's a clear passage. It means something. So what's funny is the other pastors at our church, you know, I I said, I think I've come up with, with something I'd like to share with. So the one that called me, who will remain nameless, well, I could tell because he, he had had every argument about this subject under the sun. Well, he wouldn't let me talk. He was giving me all his arguments. And I said, well, I thought you wanted to hear what I got to say. And he's like, 
oh, that's not what you're going to say? I'm like, well, you haven't let me let me say what I'm going to – you keep giving me all these arguments. So here's what's funny about this. So my presentation to him lasted an hour. I was like, here's what I think. So I go through the presentation. Well, the next thing I know is, what is it, four or five days later, he invites me. I give that presentation to all the leaders because <laughs> he went from thinking one way about what I was going to say to – Oh, I like this. This is good. Come share this with everybody. And so what it is basically is that you have the situation in Corinthians, which a lot of the problems, if you read both letters, they were having a a, a gender, what would you say, a gender uh, – Kind of like what we have Gender in our identity si- issue. That's exactly yeah, uh, what they were having. Yeah, they were having males dressing up like females and females dressing up like males because their background, First Corinthians six, was a lot of this prostitution and you know, uh, you know the I, I, yeah. I forgot the exact terms there, but you get the idea. It was like kind Male of male prostitutes that, and homosexual offenders. You get a Bourbon Street. Type because we've all you know we live in Louisiana. Corinth was a rough town. It was rough. Well, it was a and it was a typical port town. No rougher you know. than ours, by the way. But and no. so when you read that in light of reading that about the hair covered and well, they had an issue just trying to figure out from a, from looking at people who the men were and who the women were. That's when you run into and, trouble. And so I took things back to Matthew nineteen, it, you know, where Jesus defines marriage. He and he says this phrase over and over. It's over and over in the Bible. God made them male and female. And the next phrase is where I zero in on. And for this reason, that we, you don't mess with that. You have a male and you have a female. And for that reason, marriage happens and the two become one. And what's no, you know, what was two is now one. And so when you fast forward to what, my view is on the role of women, God institutes this system where he has pastors and elders who kind of oversee the church. Well, what is that? He goes through the qualifications to being a pastor and elder, and guess what they are? They're husbands of but one wife. Right. Well, what is that? that that's, a, that's two people who are now one. And so, yes, they're different because they're female or male. But in that, we now have a unit. And so I'm like, well, here we are in Corinth where we've already had the male-female identity in question. We have that problem. Now we have women who are just firing off in their assemblies. Not Because I'm like, well, where are the elder teams telling this woman, hey, we're this is not what we're doing here. And so you remember the rebuke on it was she needs to go ask her own husband at, at home. And so that was my whole issue with that. You know, if, if someone who has a church where they have elder teams, which are husbands and females, that's why y'all know me. I feel like when the elders meet the men, their wife should be there also. Well, because, trust me, they're a part of it. I mean, well, right. <laughs> but, but you see where I'm going with this. Oh, yeah. I'm like women and men who funk, who have figured out as a married couple to be leaders of the church. They understand their roles. It's the same in the church as it is at their home. Right. We have our different roles, but together that meshes and it becomes one unit yep. for Jesus. Yep. And so my wife and I do the same thing. We we are in, you know, worship leading together. Well, look, she sings. I can't sing. I mean, I can make a, a sound. A joyful noise. But as Maybe leaders, you say, well, how do y'all function? <clears throat> well, we're together. And when we get up and teach our class, you know, we, we do it together. There's no authority issue whatsoever. I'm the head of my household, and she'll she'll gladly, you know, surrender to that. But she that doesn't mean that while we're standing in front of an audience, well, she can't speak as a submissive woman to her husband in a, on a subject that we're discussing. You see, within the context. Let's take let's take a quick break. So obviously I've opened up a can of worms because a lot of people say, well, what exactly? And look, I'm fine with people feeling uncomfortable, you know, about that context. Right. 
But what I'm getting at is when you look at the big picture on how God valued women through Jesus's ministry, you see that there's a value. When you read the text in 1 Corinthians and those others, that we're neither male nor female in Christ, but we have a role in marriage as the husband leading his wife, the wife submitting to her husband. I think that function works in the eldership and the pastor. I think it's their decision as husband and wife teams, male and female, to make determinations at a church on what institutes an abuse of authority or not. So that's where I'm going. So if you take this matter in Corinth, I think they had a situation where women, there was a gender problem already at the, you know, in, in the fundamentals, but I think they were not submitting to anyone. They were just getting together and screaming, hollering, using the the gifts that had that had been given to them. You know, with the, you know the speaking in tongues, they took that to another level. And so, I think where were the elders? I think as as husband and wife teams, it's their responsibility to deem those case by case, and whether someone is not surrendering first of all to God, and then surrendering to these husband wife teams. So that well, that's where I'm going and with you that. Gotta in remember the future. that when you talk about the early church, you're talking about everybody are new Christians. You know, I mean, it's not like they've been around for a long time. That's right. So it was taking a while to mature people to the point of understanding what you're talking about, Jace, which is why the early church had so many problems, which is why mm-hmm. Paul had to write these letters to address them because everybody are going, written for our learning. They are. And so, you know, over time, we've learned some things. And I, I guess we're, we're getting in wrap up mode, but I'll say this about what we've been talking about. It was interesting because we've kind of talked about a lot today in terms of the the American church model versus how we go forward and all of it springing out of this conversation. From my perspective, one of the things that really probably has not helped us advance this thought, Dad, you were talking about, about going to church have been guys like me who are all across our culture who are so used to going in and having church. I mean, you know, you have mm-hmm. that group of people. That's right. we put them together. So, a lot of times they even sit in the same spot every time, and we become our own worst enemy. You know, I'm driving in, so my experience about doing Easter Sunday was that we're still getting together to beam something out, you know, for folks to get some instruction, but there's nobody there. And so I even said when we were filming it, it feels weird because it's like being in the Super Bowl because you know Easter is like the pastor Super Bowl. I mean, big crowds, we love it, we feast on it. Oh yeah, and so here I am talking to the camera, me and one other guy talking to the camera, and there's nobody looking back at me. There's a couple of people out there, you know, camera guys. Yeah. And so it feels strange from my perspective. I'm driving in, and I'm praying about what I'm going to be talking about, and I'm looking, and nobody's stirring around. I mean, our whole community is just quiet, except for yeah. one place, the donut place had about 10 cars. I thought, well, I guess donuts trump pandemic. By the way, Al, yeah. and that is when <laughs> I'm during, gonna get that during, donut. during periods like this, that's when you'll really know who the kingdom of God is yeah. and who it's not. So well, I'll, that's I'll, why I say that well, to say as a pastor, as with the pastor's mindset, I think there's things all of us can learn. I know a lot of pastors watch our podcast and listen because this is, I mean, we're in this whole thing of the pandemic. We have to realize that we're still doing what God called us to do just because we don't have a group of people yeah. every Sunday we're with. So uh, you got to roll with that. You yeah, know? I think Jesus, though, was introducing to her – about don't get hung up on the place because the Spirit's going to be poured out. And I think we'll get to the truth section next, but when he says, I am the truth, and a lot of what he did made people like who are religious people very uncomfortable, yep. which I'm okay with that. I'm, I actually like that. <laughs> yeah. But here's my – and my point is because I know people are going to say, good grief, what is Jay saying about the role of women? Well, here's what I'm saying. Let me just give you one illustration to, to say what I'm saying. If you're at a church building, you know, we do the Lord's Supper. Well, some people would deem it an abuse of authority if the women were passing the trays, which I think is utterly ridiculous. Which, However, but those same people, now that the pandemic, the coronavirus, they would think nothing about it if you're at your house and your wife went over there and got you the tray or whatever. How are you going to take the Lord's Supper or whatever and hand it to you? They, it never entered their mind. Happens and my, all the time. my point is, you've, you, you don't be, uh, you, you don't realize you make doctrines 
based on a place and a rule that you might be mistaken about, especially when it has nothing to do with the heart or Jesus and it devalues people somehow or another. If you're violating one of those rules, you got to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute here. I never have an issue on what particular gender someone is if they're either praying or handing me something to eat. <laughs> I never make an issue out of those two things. Well, they, I, uh, who's that praying beggar? Good night, it's I your woman. I would tell you something else. I don't have a problem when they're sharing Jesus. What's what's funny to me, me is either. First Corinthians 1, where all this controversy came from, well, in, in Second Corinthians, where it talks about we're ambassadors and therefore we, uh, you know, as God, though God were making his appeal to us. I've read that before and said, was that the only the men? And they're like, well, no. That There's an old saying, Jace, uh, not too old because I was the one who dreamed it up. The saying is, <laughs> if you have to tell your woman that you are the head of the house, you're not. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Submit to me, woman. Yeah. Uh oh. We got to roll. We'll, we'll we'll talk more about this in the future for sure. We'll we'll have to take a look at. We'll let you give your full presentation, Jason, in the future. Yeah. So we're so glad you guys were with us today. You can subscribe on iTunes or Spotify or YouTube or Facebook, and be sure and rate us on iTunes so that other people can know about the podcast.